Good evening. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance, in accordance with Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is 6 p.m. All right, first item on the agenda is going to be our opening and invocation and uh, invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Trustee Mr. Kitt, please. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, one indivisible, liberty and justice for all. On honor of Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Uh, if you would like to join me, I'd like to say a word in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for loving us. We praise you, Lord, and thank you for the opportunity to meet and conduct business for the school and for your children. Lord, we pray for guidance and direction tonight. Dear God, we, uh, we come to you broken some tonight and hurting. Lord, we, we know we live in a fallen world, but we know, Lord, we rest in the fact that you are in control. You're on your throne. And with that, Lord, we just uh, pray for your guidance and pray for your healing for this country and for this community, both emotionally and physically. Dear Lord, we just pray, pray for strength and, and encourage, Lord, in being convicted and to, uh, just to let our actions glorify you. Dear Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you, Lord, for our CISD staff and all that they do for our students and our families. Lord, we, we pray for your protection over them this summer. Dear God, we pray for our students. We pray for their protection of their, them and their families this summer. Just watch over them and just be with us tonight, Lord. Be with this meeting. And uh, just thank you for your many blessings upon this district. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. 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 Dr. Williams, uh, Dr. Noll, um, uh, been working with uh, Dr. Noll and Ms. Gladys, and I know the heart of our uh, school board. Talked with them, and we just felt like that it'd be important to uh, to make a statement uh, given what's all going on in our country. And so, yeah, if you would, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this, and I, I think what. Uh, what all of us are like to express to all of you. As a school board, we understand that our students, families, and staff are hurting during these challenging times in our world. Our hearts ache from the tragic death of George Floyd. Events occurring since have highlighted, highlighted the racial division in our nation. Racism towards black Americans and people of color should not be tolerated and it only undermines the desired values of our nation, state, and community. However, racism exists, and acknowledging that can possibly be a first step towards eradicating and healing. As part of the school community, we have devoted ourselves to public education because we believe in the unlimited potential in every human being, in every student, the role of public education is vital to preserving and strengthening the core foundation of our democracy, that we are all created equal. That is what Conroe ISD strives for and what is meant by our longstanding commitment to all means all. Together, as a school community, we can show our continued dedication to our students during this difficult time by doing two things. First, we must listen intently. We must open up our hearts and listen to others with kindness, grace, and understanding. We need to listen not with the intent of rebuttal, but with the intent of seeking truth and solution. This starts with us, the school board. Secondly, we must act with intention. We must act justly, love mercifully, and walk humbly. We should strive to be role models for our students and each other as we demonstrate our commitment to equality with understanding and compassion for one another. This school board is committed to listening more intently and acting more purposefully as we work to make 
Conroe ISD not only a welcoming, accepting, and supportive place for our students, staff, and families, but an environment where our students thrive and reach even greater heights than ever before. As a school board, we are thankful for our superintendent's heart and his continued desire to work towards these goals. We are grateful for the Conroe ISD staff. They continue to strive to achieve the best for our students. They are not only our students' role models, but ours as well. We saw firsthand the fruits of their labor in 10 amazing graduation ceremonies two weeks ago that we celebrated the success of over 4,000 seniors while keeping the students and families safe. We are also very thankful for the men and women in the Conroe ISD Police Department. They work tirelessly and courageously to help make our schools safe places for our students, staff, and families. They exemplify what community police policing is and what it should be. We may not have all the answers today, and we may make mistakes along the way. But the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees embraces the diversity of our community and our schools and remains committed to equality and its quest to achieve the best for our students. Thank you. Mr. Kidd, thank you um, for your work uh, with that and delivering that message. I, I have a copy of your words here and I'm gonna sign that copy um, to signify my support and, and I'm gonna pass it down and I'll invite everyone to sign that as you see fit as well. Absolutely. Thank you. I want to commend each one of you gentlemen for standing solid ground and um, committing to what Mr. Kidd just read out and signing that petition. It, it shows we all are uh, on the same page and united in our quest to continue to better our district relative to racism and equality um, and just continue to strive to be the best we can be as a school district and treat every kid, every staff member, every human being as they should be with humanity and equality. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is I want to see citizen participation. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes, we have one person that has signed up. Okay, um, thank you. The next item on the agenda is public uh, comment from those who have registered to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Everyone is reminded that this portion of the meeting is not, appropriate, is not the appropriate forum for bringing complaints for which resolution is sought. Before complaints can be submitted to the Board of Trustees as an agenda item, they must be addressed by, the following, by following the appropriate policy and administrative procedures. Also, please keep in mind that the Board has, no obligation to, has an obligation to protect the confidentiality of individuals that could personally identify uh, information that could per personally identify a student. The board cannot permit comments that include student names or any information that might identify a specific student. This prohibition does not apply if the person speaking is the student's parent or guardian or is over the age of 18 and speaking about himself or herself. If an, inf if, if an issue is mentioned that is on tonight's posted agenda, the board would defer it's a discussion of the issue until uh, the item is reached on the agenda. 
For any subjects that is not on the board's posted agenda, the board cannot deliberate or make a decision, but it can furnish specific factual information or cite existing policy in response to inquiries. Each person is limited to more, no more than five minutes for their presentation. Um, this will allow the board to hear from citizens as hear from citizens as well as ensure that the board meeting runs efficiently. Uh, as there are very uh, there are many important items on the board's agenda that must be considered. Everyone in attendance is reminded to treat all speakers with respect, regardless of whether they agree or disagree with the speaker's message. Any person who does not conduct themselves accordingly will be asked to leave or will be escorted from the room. Ms. Gottfried, please call the first, first person. Ms. Hi, good evening everyone. I hope you can hear me well with my mask on. Um, I wanted to uh, thank Vice President Hubert for his invitation and um, giving me the forum to tell my family and our experience at, and um, as parents and our children's experience in CISD and the inherent systemic racism that we face and implicit bias bias as well. So I can only give the experiences that we've gone through. Um, so I'm going to start with um, when I first registered my daughter at school, um, I was asked if she was a home school or if she went to private school. I told them that she was at home school with me. Um, I could hear talks in the office saying that, oh no, um, Poor thing, she's homeschooled. I had a um, neighbor, a Caucasian neighbor, who claims to be a tutor at the school that my daughter attends, which is Burnham Woods Elementary. And she told me that uh, she can tutor my daughter, assuming that my daughter would have difficulties uh, doing well in the school that she was at in this district. Another thing that my daughter experienced she was blamed for cutting a Caucasian student's hair in her classroom. Um, she was crying so much that when I picked her up from school, her eyes were swollen. And she was yelled at by her teachers. One of the other teachers tried to coerce her to change her story by telling her that that stomach, <coughs> that gut feeling that you feel in your stomach is guilt. And we caught you on the cameras in the classroom. So, uh, we also received a phone call from the assistant principal, Mrs. Marshall, and she conclusively stated that our daughter had cut another student's hair based on her investigation. The student admits to cutting his own hair the next day. Mrs. Marshall's partial investigation was flawed, biased, and quick to believe the offending student rather than proceeding on a non-biased pursuit of the truth. Another incident. My daughter was denied to, uh, she was denied admittance in the GT program. Although her academic scores were off the charts according to the GT coordinator, the principal, Mrs. Buckley, refused to let her in the program. So we had to fight to get my daughter into the program. And since she's been in the GT program, she's been doing excellent. Another incident, my daughter was left out in 30 degree cold weather because she volunteered to grab the uh, balls for recess. She asked the teacher if she could go in and get her, her jacket and the teacher told her no. Although other students, Caucasian students, have been able to go in and get their jackets when they forgot it. Okay, another thing that I've noticed. Caucasians are, only, are the only ones, about 90% of them, are given a PE ticket for water. I've seen this personally as I've come to view these PE classes on the videos here in your legal office. My five-year-old 
kindergarten student. She was denied water the entire recess time. Although Caucasians in her classroom were given PE tickets to get a drink of water. When she wanted to go get a drink of water, she was yelled at to go sit back down. I asked, her, I asked Mrs. Buckley if she could be neutral in her, her process of investigations, and she told me she is biased and on the side of her teachers. I told this to Dr. Phillips, and Dr. Phillips said, well, she doesn't believe she meant it that way. And this is also, Dr. Phillips is also Mrs. Buckley's mentor. Another incident, my daughter's life was threatened. The infinite student threatened to punch her in the face and to slit her throat. Mrs. Buckley, as usual, had no empathy. We were assured that she would be kept separate, but the next day she was placed at the same lunch table. Until this day, my husband, daughter, and I haven't received a simple, I am sorry for what happened to your daughter by Mrs. Buckley, the principal. We've stressed to her how serious his threats are, <coughs> and she still, still did not want to take that into account. Ms. Press, uh -huh. your time is... Is my time up? Yes, okay. ma'am. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Anyone else, Ms. Coffer? Okay. Gentlemen, it's all the same to you. I would like to move item 8A, Human Resources, uh, name Director of Student Support Services, up before the consent agenda. Any objections? Hearing none, Dr. Null. Uh, Human Resources, name Director of Student Support Services. Yes, thank you, sir. The, this is a, an exciting time for us, and um, I think very timely as we uh, work as a school district to coordinate all of our services together to make sure that we are serving all students and and uh, teaching a well-rounded child and, and so part of our student support services program um, will be encompassing uh, all of our community outreach as well as our counseling services positive behavior support social and emotional learning it all falls under this umbrella to make sure that we are all moving in the same direction so we're, we're excited about the um, department itself uh, and we have the perfect candidate to lead that department um, for, for well over 20 years Kim Earthman has served our school district in a variety of roles and in every role that um, she's ever taken on in Conroe ISD she has excelled uh, and exceeded expectations and has been truly a leader uh, and uh, as I as I joked with her the other day as we visited she's just someone that we always count on to get the job done um, when there's hard work to be done uh, it's very common that we um, will look to Dr. Hines and the conversation always goes to Kim can do it and and this is another one of those situations tonight that I believe 100% uh, that Kim can do it and so uh, I am excited tonight to make the recommendation of Kim Earthman to be our director of student support services mr. president so moved second, second. gentlemen I have a motion has been properly second by mr. Sanders um, any discussion Hearing none, Kim can do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Motion passes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, President Williams, <clears throat> excuse me, members of the board and Dr. Nall, thank you for your kind words. And I want to thank you for this amazing opportunity as the Director of Student Support Services. As I began my 20th year in CISD, I, have felt, I feel blessed to have worked with so many great people who have really helped me grow to be the person I am today. I want to say thank you to Dr. Joanne Bacon, Hartwell Brown, Drew Ann Davis, Becky Page, Melinda Donnellan, Deanna Martin, Teresa Cannon, and Dr. Shelley Winkler. I'm also forever thankful to Dr. Kathy Gibson, who helped me find my voice and my confidence. It is with a grateful heart that I acknowledge my team, also in Student Support Services. Um, thank you for your dedication to keeping the whole child at everything that we do. Thank you to my assistant, Sandra Vaughn, who's been by my side for 11 years, and to my colleagues in Curriculum and Instruction and, staff and Special Education Department. To Dr. Edith Upshaw, thank you for your leadership, being on my sounding board, and most importantly, being my friend. Dr. Hines, thank you for being my mentor, always challenging me to see the bigger picture and for believing in me. I truly appreciate your guidance. Most importantly, I would like to thank my very supportive family, my husband, Wade, my kids, Alexis, Lake, and Annabelle, and my granddaughter, Sophia. 
Thank you for putting up with the fact that your mom could be at your school at any time. (laughs) Also, to my family who could not be here tonight but are watching online, thank you for constantly being in my corner to cheer me on. A special hi to my my nephew, Zach, who inspires me to make sure we are meeting the needs of all students. I also know my dad is looking down on me and smiling. Roy T. Bennett said, be thankful for everything in your life. It's all an experience. CISD holds a very special place in my heart and has provided me with countless experiences in which to be thankful. I look forward to this new opportunity and thank you. Outstanding. Thank you. Congratulations again. Great job. All right. uh, Consent agenda item two on the agenda. I have received no request to move anything from the consent agenda. With that, I will entertain a motion. Move approval. Consent agenda is presented. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion properly second. No here, no discussion. All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, item three, administration. Receive presentation presentation of submitted names for new Conroe ISD campus. All right. Um, if I may, just before we get to that, since uh, Ms. Blakelock is going to be presenting, I just want to say a big public thank you to our communications team, also uh, everyone in our operations team and our secondary education office, Mr. Colson, and uh, everyone that he works with for their their tireless work with our graduations. Uh, as Mr. Kidd mentioned, um, we were able to to have w- wonderful graduation ceremonies, keep everyone safe, and we not only did it for um, our Conroe ISD students, our 4,300 graduates, but we also uh, were able to support Magnolia and Tomball and and their quest to have their students walk across the stage and we couldn't have done it without the hard work of all of our teams and and especially communication so i just want to say thank you to them so thank you she was the woman behind the mask Um, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll, it is my pleasure tonight to present um, some naming options to you. I came to you at last month's board meeting and shared with you the naming process, and I'm here tonight to share um, an overview of the submissions that we received through the website. So just to help refresh um, everyone with our timeline and this process, what we have here is we initiated this at our May 19th board meeting. We collected responses through our website. From May 20th through June 12th, we received 885 submissions. And I'm here tonight to share those with you. And then we'll be back again in July um, for your discussion and potential approval to name our new campus. So a quick reminder, uh, elementary schools can be named after geographical areas, heroes, persons of distinction, people who have donated land or money, um, anyone who who really is a national or state hero. Um, This campus is located in the Caney Creek feeder zone. It is, uh, as you can see, just on the road from Grangerland and Milam, if you see the yellow thumbtack on there. This is an old picture as construction has begun, but it is located in Granger Pines, the front of our school. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, a glimpse of the names. We do have three slides, so um, well, I'll give you a moment. Three slides. Three slides, yes. Mm-hmm. And we've submitted these all to you electronically, right. the full spreadsheet, yeah. and we'll make sure that we have that updated for you as well. And, and we'll be posting the full list online as well for members of the community who are interested. Oh, my goodness. Carol Baskins did it. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> You'll see a couple of those. It's always a few comedians in the group. Dear mine. <laughs> all right. Can someone have two schools named after them? <laughs> it always interests me when we get suggestions uh, for schools that we already have. Yeah. Yeah. These films. Hmm. All right, and the last few. <laughs> the cool, the cool, the cool, cool, cool elementary. Cool Where do you go to school? The cool elementary. 
It's a cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I wonder if the, the kids that are going there submitted. So as I said, we'll be back in July. Um, I'll present this to you so for your discussion and consideration, and we'll be posting this online for the public. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Okay. Um, uh, four. All right, item 4A, consider planning construction. Consider and approve the selection of construction manager at, at risk uh, for the campus renovation 2020 project, Dr. No. All right, Mr. Foster is here to present these next items. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Null. It's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval the construction manager at risk selection for our campus renovations 2021 project. So uh, our IBI group, our design architect, helped us by preparing an RFQ, which was published by our uh, purchasing department. We had 16 contractors respond to this RFQ. State law limits us to an invitation of no more than five to participate in the second step of our two-step selection process. So our committee selected Christensen Building Group, Ho Construction, Duratech Inc., Ellisor Constructors, and GTT General Contractors to participate in that second step and following the turning in of the pricing proposals in step two. Our committee selected GTT contractors and offers them as a construction manager selected to be the best value for the district. This time we're requesting your approval of GTT as the CM for Campus Renovations 2021. So moved. Second. A motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Item B, consider and approve selection of construction manager at risk for uh, the new teacher training center at Wolf Forest, um, Wolf Forest Stadium project. At this time, we do request your approval of the selection of construction manager risk for our new teacher <coughs> training center at Wolf Forest Stadium. Our design architect, PBK, helped us by preparing the RFQ, which was published by our purchasing department. We had 14 companies respond to the RFQ. Again, just like before, the state limits us to a short list of five to participate in step two of our two-step selection process. Our committee uh, evaluated the respondents and selected five companies, Brookstone, Duratech, GTT, Joris, and Marshall to participate in the second step of our two-step process. After the pricing proposals were received and evaluated, Brookstone was selected as the offeror who submitted the proposal determined to be the best value for the district. This time we're requesting your appro uh, approval of Brookstone as our construction manager at risk for the teacher training center. So moved. Second. We have a motion. Second, gentlemen. Any <clears throat> in discussion? Well, all in favor? Motion passes. Let's keep it moving. Thank you, sir. Uh, item C. Consider and approve the guaranteed maximum price for amendment for the Wood Forest High School Specialty Classroom Addition Project and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract documents. Okay. Sure. Mr. Brown. So at this time, we're requesting your approval of a guaranteed maximum price amendment for our Woodlands High School Specialty Classroom Additions Project. So this project is born from our bond referendum, which passed in November of 2019. If you recall, in February, we selected Ellisor Constructors to be the construction manager at risk for this job. And since then, they've been working with our design architect, the IBI group, to develop the scope of work and a guaranteed maximum price of $13,411,387. This time, we're requesting your approval of this GMP so that we can begin work at the Women's High School. I move approval as presented. Thank you. Any discussion? I have a question. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Moore. Uh, Mr. Foster, on their proposal, um, they only have division totals and not the divisions aren't broken down by line. Have you seen a line item breakdown of those divisions? Yes, sir, I have. And they are... They, they meet your approval? Yeah, they are commensurate in line with other projects. Of similar magnitude. Thank you very much. Okay, any further discussion? Here or none, all in favor? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, uh, Mr. Foster. Um, item D, receive capital improvement updates. Mr. Foster. <clears throat> if you'll oblige me, I'll bring you up to speed on our capital improvements we have underway throughout the district. I'm going to start you with uh, Stockton Junior High School. So Stockton Junior High is scheduled to open in August when students return from the summer break. So I'm happy to report it is on schedule. So you can see from the uh, growing green patches on the outside of the front door that it is nearing its completion. 
On the inside of the building, you can see furniture, fixtures, equipment, things that are populating that building. Uh, you can see classrooms are cleaning up nicely. The learning spaces are coming uh, coming together. You can see the furniture. I mean, we are we are essentially outfitting that building to be used as a school uh, right now. So our administrators take over their administrative spaces this month. And as teachers and staff return from summer break, they'll be going to work at Stockton Junior High School. So like I said, it is on schedule and scheduled to open in August when students return from summer break. Flex School number 20, which you just saw a list of potential names for, is our new elementary school in the Cannon Creek High School feeder zone. It is also on schedule. It is scheduled to open in August of 2021. I mean, so roughly uh, a year from this summer. So you can see from the overhead picture, the paving on the site is essentially complete. So they're working on the building side and building structure uh, as we speak. Schedule is on schedule. So the project is on schedule. And like I said, scheduled to open in August of 2021. Moving on to Washington Junior High School, which is a conversion to Washington High School following the opening of Stockton. So we're re-roofing portions of that building to bring the oldest uh, portions of the roof uh, over. So it had reached the end of their useful life, so we're putting a new roof on many sections of that building. On the inside, we're moving some walls around, redoing some air conditioning and duct work to make use uh, for the new programs as it returns to Washington High School. And we're also doing the normal safety and security upgrades that we do on a campus. So you're looking at a, a picture of the front entry uh, where we're putting in the secure vestibule areas and upgrading access control and cameras for that campus to bring it up to our current standard uh, for safety and security while we're, while we're on that campus doing the work. It is currently on schedule and will return to service in August when the students return from summer break. Our campus renovations uh, 2020 project, which a major scope of work at Glenlock Elementary is essentially everything above the ceiling being redone. So the air conditioning systems and the piping systems that building had reached the end of their useful life. So you can see from this picture, the ceiling up has been removed from the building. Uh, we've also started going back in with the equipment. So you're looking at new ductwork, new piping, new wiring, things of that nature for our low voltage systems. Uh, we are uh, continuing to upgrade the air conditioning equipment there. So that's the a couple of months back, you'll recall approving the equipment only purchase. So this is uh, evidence of some of that uh, being installed on that campus. And while we're there, we're also working on the uh, building uh, communications. So the first responder radio systems, things of that nature, all of our safety and security enhancements that are, we're doing throughout the district. <laughs> At Campus Renovations 2020 for Kaufman Elementary, we are installing more concrete paving to get more parents and uh, vehicles off of the, the mm -hmm. neighborhood streets. Uh, so we're building a stacking loop, uh, much like we've done at other campuses around the district. So that project is on schedule. It'll, it'll return, I mean, it'll be open for school when they return from the summer break in August. At Knox, uh, if you'll recall, part of our campus renovation projects are athletics improvements. So Knox was due for a refresh of the track surface. So the track surface has been refreshed. It's ready for striping. Uh, waiting. The only thing we're waiting on is the striping crew to get to the other tracks as well. So over the next couple of weeks, it'll be finished and returned to service. Uh, at York, the, that track has reached the end of its life, so it's been stripped all the way down to the subgrade. Uh, they're getting ready to put the rubber back on it, and then that'll help us get the, the striping crews started so we can stripe all the tracks at one time. Uh, York's track will be returned to service uh, in August when it re uh, return, when we return to school. At Runyon Elementary, we're doing some PE classroom additions, uh, which is part of our bond referendum. So you can see from the pictures here, we're working on building pads, underground utility and structures. This project is scheduled to be complete in December of 2020. So they're rapidly uh, running through the foundation work. We'll be putting the building up. Uh, during the fall semester. The goal here is to return it to service so that the school can use it in the spring semester uh, when students return from the winter break in 2021. Uh, there's two sections of that building being worked on. One will be a library and gym addition. The other one is to replace some classrooms that are being displaced for the gym addition to be uh, to happen. You're looking at the classroom addition uh, right here in this picture. So at York Junior High, we are also doing a building addition. This is a fairly complex addition to increase the overall capacity at York Junior High. It is science labs and art labs and fine arts spaces and athletic uh, expansions of locker rooms and all the uh, facilities in the cafeteria in order to accommodate a, a larger population at York Junior High. 
So you're looking at a picture from the outside looking into the dining commons. So you can see the demising wall we've built to separate construction from uh, the population inside the building. So demolition is the main focus of the work right now so that we can get the big, ugly, nasty, dirty work out of the way. Uh, we'll be working on building foundations over the next month or so. Uh, and then with any luck, we'll have the big components of the structure in place right about the time the students return for the, uh, from the summer break. But that project is scheduled to continue on through August of 2021. At the Woodlands College Park High School, where we're doing classroom additions there, we talked about, uh, uh, we approved that project last month and got started on it. So you're looking at the, uh, what used to be the bus loop for uh, College Park High School and the, the demolition where the buildings were actually connected uh, is in progress right now. So that project is scheduled through December of 2021. It is currently on, on schedule uh, as we just got started on the building side. Now inside the building, uh, a high school, the vintage of College Park is due for a little bit of interior freshen up. So we started on the third floor. So the painting is essentially complete on the third floor. They're moving to the second floor. By the time we return from the summer break, uh, the interior will be <clears throat> mostly painted with a new fresh coat of paint. And then we'll return in the holidays and breaks to do carpet and some other, other upgrades to the classrooms over the, over the next uh, year or so while we're there working. While we're at College Park, we're also doing the necessary upgrades for safety and security and cameras and access control, the first responder radio systems, all the other communication components that are being upgraded district-wide as safety and security. Which brings me to our safety and security project for 2020. Now there's not a lot of pictures to see here, but what we've uh, chosen to show you is a technician working on our burglar panel at Milan Elementary. Uh, but th this project is again touching access control, uh, egress alarm systems, uh, the uh, shatter resistant film on our security vestibules to make sure that they, you know, we, we're up to our current standard on, on our secure areas uh, for our elementary schools, junior highs, and high schools as we go around. Uh, so the project is on schedule. We're scheduled to be working our way through essentially East County schools uh, through December of this year, and we look to bring you another installment for 2021, right around January or so uh, in 2021 to continue this district-wide work. And that is our update. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. Thank you. That was pretty extensive. Nice <laughs> deal, man. All right, item five, business and finance. Consider approval of Literary Resources, LLC, for the purchase of, uh, what's that, Newmont? What is it? Phonemic. Phonemic. Awareness. <laughs> Sound good. <laughs> yeah. Fon it's phonics. I'm going to have to use the program. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> 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 go ahead. Um. Mr. Reeves. <laughs> Mr. Reeves, go ahead. He'll let it all. I, I feel your pain. <laughs> what is that one? <laughs> Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Null. Mm -hmm. Tonight we are requesting that the board approve the selection of Literary Resources LLC for an estimated expenditure of approximately $100,000. Literary Resources LLC is a provider of phonemic awareness, mm -hmm. the skills that they need to help them succeed by Dr. Michael mm -hmm. Hegarty. It is a phonological awareness resource, which is a key foundational skill that all readers must be adept in for writing, reading and writing success. According to our curriculum department, the sequential systematic approach of this curriculum is supported by extensive research and will replace the current resources that do not incorporate these extremely important skills for our pre-K and kindergarten students. For, um, sorry, procuring this curriculum through our district center local contract with the Central Texas Purchasing Alliance will be using ALEF IST's contract for instructional materials was determined to be the method of, uh, method of purchase that provide the best value for the district. Funding will become from the Title II fund, and at this time we request your approval. Okay. So moved. I second. have a motion second in discussion. All right, all in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Consider award for RFQ. Uh, we're on item B. Uh, consider award for RFQ 20. Dash zero five dash zero one two way radios got that <laughs> <laughs> a little easier there uh, tonight we're recommending at the board award RFQ twenty dash zero five dash zero one two way radios to Cross Point Communications for an estimated expenditure of six hundred forty thousand dollars as presented. Request for quotes pertaining to the purchase of two-way radios for the district were emailed to register vendors through our electronic e-bidding system. We had five qualified vendors that submitted bid responses. In this request, vendors were asked to offer pricing through an awarded purchasing cooperative contract for approximately 400 two-way radios, installation and setup of 15 repeaters, all of the necessary accessories needed to operate these devices at select campuses, and the buyback of the analog radios that are being replaced. 
Proposals were evaluated by the CISD Technology Department and reviewed by the Purchasing Department. Funds for this project are provided by the School Safety and Security Grant, which you guys may remember that you approved in November of 2019. Best value offers are recommended for award, and at this time we request your approval. So moved. I second the motion. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. Alsandy. Yes, so I looked at the, the top two vendors, the yes, one sir. that we awarded to, yes, was a little bit higher on some of them, yes, but sir. it seemed to me, and I'm just asking clarification, that they were also offering a much longer extended warranty. Correct. I think it was like manufacturer's warranty of two years versus five years. Correct. Correct. Plus the fact that they were also offering to repair those radios. Is that is correct? That, is correct. That my yes, clear? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I just wanted to yes, make sure. Mm -hmm. So that's why vendor two didn't get it. Correct. Got it. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Do we get one in our cars, Mr. No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> we get one of the old ones. Go I ahead. think it'd be neat. Yeah. Just, no. I'm just saying. Uh -huh. We know how to work those. <laughs> I'm just saying. So my question is, is the ones that are that are being replaced and they're purchasing some or all of them back, how, how old, how long have we been using those and what's the typical lifespan of Well, these are all analog, so they're they're pretty old at this point. Yeah. So right. a lot of, we're having a hard time getting signals in the campuses. Digital. So now being digital and adding these repeaters is going to make a big difference in the campuses. That's what, that's what I wanted to get. And just for, and for clarification, these are radios that our administrative teams use. These are not right. police radios, Correct. but they're for the administrative teams. Yeah. Yes. yes. Because we, we approved some radios for the we, we've done buses already. Ago, we yes, did buses. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. Something. Yes, we've done buses and the police, so this is kind of that last, next step of getting going digital. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Yes. Motion yes. passed unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Thank Reeves. You. Appreciate you, sir. Uh, consider approval of 2020-2021 employee pay uh, plan and stipends. All right, Mr. Rice. Yes, good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. Tonight, we're recommending the Board of Trustees approve the 2020-2021 employee pay, pay, pay plans and stipends. The employee, employee pay plans and stipends that we're requesting approval for this evening are recommended by the TASB Compensation Group based on the results of their salary study and input from the district. The pay plan, the pay plan includes cost of living increases for all employees. The board has previously approved a 3% cost of living increase on the midpoint for all teachers, librarians, nurses, and counselors. In this recommendation, all increases will be based off of the midpoint for each group's pay grade. Hourly support and auxiliary employees will receive a 3.5% increase. Bus drivers will receive a flat $1 per hour increase, and that is equivalent to a 5% increase on the midpoint. Police will receive a 5% increase with the ability to earn additional certification pay. Administrative education and administrative business will receive a 2.5% increase. This proposal aligns with our 2020-2021 budget objectives and our current 2020-2021 preliminary budget is forecasting a tax rate decrease for our taxpayers. We believe that this proposal will keep CISD competitive with peer school districts in the Houston area. At this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any comment? Phenomenal job, gentlemen. Phenomenal job. All right. Um, all in favor? Motion passes. You know, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Darren? All right. Item D. Receive financial reports. All right. Ms. Scarza. Ms. Scarza. Good evening, President Williams, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is my pleasure this evening to present the financial statements for the month ended May 31st. First statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows the district's assets, liabilities, and fund balance. Total assets in the general fund are $319 million, debt service $49.5 million, child nutrition $6.5, and self-funded insurance $10.8. Taking a closer look at our cash and investments, we'll focus on the general fund, bank deposits of 185,000, investments in the state pools of 130.5 million, short-term investments, 44.6 million, our investments with Wood Forest National Bank, 76.3 million, and our longer-term investments with TCG, 51.9 million, for total cash and investments in the general fund of $303.6 million. 
Next statement is the income statement. The income statement shows the district's revenues and expenditures. Our revenues come from local, state, and federal sources. Looking at our expenditures by major object in the general fund payroll, $295.1 million is our largest expenditure. In debt service, debt service payment of $74.8 million. In child nutrition, supplies and materials at $7.8 million. And self-funded insurance, $37 million. Taking a look at closer, closer look at local revenue, um, in the general fund, our property taxes and in debt service is our largest generator of income, $360 million in the general <coughs> fund and $96 million in debt service. In child nutrition food sales at $6.2 million for the year and in self-funded insurance premium contributions at $38 million. Self-funded insurance, um, another positive month for the health plan in May. Um, total revenue of 4.1 million, total expense of 3.2 for a net revenue of 846,000. Participation is creeping back up at the wellness centers at 217 for the month. We are averaging 474 year to date. Investments as of May 31st, par value is 547 million. The pools are yielding 0.926. Our investments with Wood Forest are yielding 0.36. Our shorter term investments are yielding 1.55 with a WAM of 142 days. And our longer term investments with TCG yielding 1.93. Our combined portfolio is yielding 0.9642. And our benchmark, the 90 day T bill, is at 0.148. Thank you, Ms. Garza. Gentlemen, a question? I have one question, and I'm not yes, sure sir. if it's for, for you or Mr. Rice. Um, there's been a lot in the news lately about uh, the state withholding CARES Act payments, and I'm just curious if that is going to throw an anticipated major monkey wrench in our finances over the next few months. If there's anything we need to do to position ourselves, since we're not apparently not going to be receiving that money. Yeah, and, and Karen has been, you know, really, really in touch with the CARES Act. In the CARES Act, uh, the district is looking to receive about $6.5 million in the neighborhood of that, that number. Um, however, the state is going to art artificially reduce our average daily attendance to take away 95% of that $6.5 million. In that other 5% uh, that is left, uh, it will be uh, distributed out to not only the school district, but to area private schools, charter schools, in the area that, that we will have to administer, you know, handing those funds out, getting reports back from those districts and doing the legwork for that 5%. So, so it is basically net effect zero for us, other than we get the extra work. There you go. Maintaining the other districts. But you're not anticipating us having to pull money out of I do not fund think. the undesignated not, reserves or something like that? Okay. Thank you. And as we've looked toward next year's budget, uh, as we we've spoken of you, the foresight you had last year to, um, to to save six million from last year's budget to allow us to move forward is what is giving us flexibility for next year to make sure that we can staff appropriately and we're not having conversations about teaching cuts or reducing pay for our employees and that's really because the way you planned last year in preparation for this year so we appreciate that outstanding. thank you Mr. Rice Mr. Garza outstanding appreciate the work all right, a closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by sections 551.071, 551.072, 551.074, 551.076 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with, with regard to any matter considered in such closed or executive session meeting or session, then such f final notice, final decision, or final vote shall be, shall be at either A, the public meeting upon reconvening of this public meeting, or B, at a subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice thereof as the board shall determine. A closed session of the board will now be held. The time is 6.48 p.m. So if we could, gentlemen, we'll begin at 7 o'clock. We'll be back in the big room again so that we can space out. Now in open session at 8.09 p.m. The next item on the agenda, agenda is executive follow-up from executive session. Mr. Mr. Moore, you have a motion? Yes, I do, sir. Having completed the superintendent's evaluation, I move that the board approve the amendments to his contract with the terms as discussed in executive session. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Properly second. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor? 
Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll entertain a motion to. So moved. Adjourn. Thank you.